And so what Paul's saying here is, listen, even if an angel from heaven comes to you and he starts sharing that it's Jesus plus, that it's Jesus plus this equals salvation, that you somehow have to jump through this hoop and this hoop and this hoop, and then finally God will accept you, right? And he's saying that's a false gospel. And it's not really even a gospel at all because that's not good news. And the word gospel means good news. And if it's, it, if it's anything, if it's Jesus plus anything, it's not good news. And it's sad because there we have millions of people who believe today that there's these hoops that you have to jump through in order for God to love you or accept you, right? All false religions are based on the premise of you do this, 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 and then God will accept you. Christianity is the only, and the, the gospel is the only thing that says, listen, you can't do it on your own, therefore I'll come to you, God says. Let me give a, a general definition of what it means to believe by a false gospel, so hopefully that helps us kind of put some parameters on this. You're believing, and I'm believing a false gospel when you view your standing before God based on anything other than faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Rules over a relationship. That's how it can play out in our lives. Um, when we start emphasizing rule following over authentic relationship with Jesus that brings natural transformation in our lives. That's called legalism. Where your, your dependence rests on your ability to follow the rules. Your relationship with God um, and, and his view of you has to do with you following rules. That's legalism, that's rules over relationship. And, and this is how it, how it can kind of slip in, right? So say you had a, a, a bad week, right? You got angry, you yelled at people, you had some you know, road rage, you got so angry, you kicked the dog, right? If it was a cat, it'd be okay, but it, you kicked the dog, it's, it's just too much. I'm just messing, I'm just messing. Don't kick anything, all right? That's, don't, don't do that. But you had a bad week, right? You, got, you, you struggled with sin, and so, so you came here, you come in here at, to church on Sunday, and you're like, I, I don't really feel like I can worship God. I don't think he really loves me. I mean, if, 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 if people here knew the week that I just had or the things that I did this week, they wouldn't, they wouldn't love me, so God must not. I don't even feel like I can lift my hands in worship or anything because God must view me as less than because of my actions this week. Where on the flip side is, say you had a great week and you didn't miss a day of Bible reading. You had an awesome prayer time. You, you just, you, you, you helped out people. You were generous and kind and compassionate. No road rage. You fed the dog extra, right? Then you come in here like, oh, it's your breath in our lungs. Oh God, you so love me. Oh, it's been a good week, right? When we, when we start believing that our performance changes the way God views us, we've believed a false gospel. Rules over relationships. And I don't know about you, but fighting legalism in my life is a grind sometimes. Because Satan does such a fantastic job of just kind of, oh, you screwed this up and you screwed this up. God must love you a little bit less this week or today. It's easy to fall into believing that God is sitting up in heaven with a great book, checking off what we just, uh, whether or not he's going to give us a good grade or a bad grade based on our performance. When we believe that and we fall into that, we start believing a false gospel. And that leads to the second thing that uh, indicated that we may be believing a false gospel, that we believe it's behavior over belonging. It's kind of similar, right? Behavior over belonging. Um, that, that our behavior, like it, that that we have, we start focusing on the power within us to change things rather than God's power to change through belonging, right? Now, as many of you know, like um, I'm a fix it kind of guy, 
right? Like I, I love fixing things. If something's broke, I love to fix it. If, if, if something needs to be done on our home, I wanna do it, right? I wanna do the fixing of things. And sometimes we can take that fix it mentality to our, our spiritual life or to our, um, to our relationship with God. And we recognize that things are broken, but then we're like, you know what? I think I can fix it. You know, if I just have like a, a three-step plan to, you know, to be a better parent or a four-step way that I love uh, better or five ways to be a better you, you know, pull, you know, grab those boots and pull them up and just get to work and fix it. Because my behavior affects the way God views me. When really what we know, what we don't need is behavior modification. What we do need is new life in Christ. We don't need a cleaned up version of our old self. That's not what the Bible talks about. It says that you are a new creation. Behold, the old is gone. The new has come. And where we get to that newness, where we experience that is in the gospel where we recognize that we have relationship with the king of the universe and that we belong to him. There is no other gospel apart from grace and faith in Christ alone as the finished work of salvation. A false gospel says do, the true gospel says none. That's why Paul writes in Ephesians chapter two, for by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It's the gift of God, not as a result of works, so no one knows. So that question that seemed pretty easy to kind of push off, am I believing a false gospel at first glance? I'll ask again, by the way you're living and by the mentalities you have, have you bought into a false gospel?